As the land war progressed and the death toll mounted, a new form of warfare was taking place on the seas. Navies on both sides were quickly learning that wooden ships of war were increasingly vulnerable to artillery, which, thanks in part to rifling, was becoming larger and more accurate. The Union and Confederacy began retrofitting the exterior of their ships with thick sheets of iron, solid protection against incoming artillery shells. The iron sheets were slanted, causing the projectiles to expend their force upward. They would ricochet off and away from the ship. A brilliant Swedish inventor named John Ericsson saw these new ironclads being built and was hard at work on an invention that would revolutionize naval warfare. The Federals, to combat the Confederate ironclads, developed a ship uh, that had a unique capability of a revolving turret. This was called the cheese box on a raft, and John Erickson developed it, and it actually, from the beginning until it hit the water, was a hundred days construction time. The USS Monitor was completed on January 30th, 1862, and was one of the strangest sights ever seen in the water. The ship's deck was only 14 inches above the waterline. Waves splashed on her surface. With so little exterior to protect, the ship's armor could be focused on her gun turret. Inside that turret were two 11-inch smoothbore Dahlgrens, which shot a solid projectile weighing 180 pounds. Firing could take place once every two minutes. It had a steam-driven turret. It only mounted two guns. These guns were protected inside this revolving turret. They could be withdrawn and the portholes shuttered so the guns could be reloaded in relative sa safety and then the guns run out and fired at the Confederate antagonist. The Monitor engaged the Confederate ironclad Virginia, otherwise known as the Merrimack, at Hampton Roads, Virginia on March 9, 1862. It was one of the most important naval battles in history, marking the end of the wooden navy and the beginning of the armored cruiser. Though the battle lasted only two hours, the world saw, for the first time, the deadly value of a rotating gun in naval combat. The ironclads of the Confederates had their guns mounted in broadside primarily, also a stern gun, but these were the configuration of the old Navy. The whole ship had to be maneuvered so that the broadside could fire. The monitor, on the other hand, could swivel the turret, could turn its turret almost 360 degrees and fire in any direction so the ship itself did not have to be maneuvered, the turret could be turned. It was a design concept for battleship guns which remained seminal through the 20th century. But conditions inside the turret were something less than advanced. The turrets of the Monitor class were made of armor plate. They did have grates, open grates on the top, so he could escape. But the interior of the turret was cramped, it was dark, it was incredibly smoky. You have to try and imagine what it must have felt like for the sailors manning the guns to hear 100 and 200 pound projectiles hitting the outside of the turret. Uh, a continuous din, and it's not really a surprise that many sailors who served on ironclads and applied for pensions after the war complained of total 100% deafness from ruptured eardrums due to the concussion sustained working guns and ironclad turrets. 